We are live! Yes, we are. We're jamming back here, green room, eating some... Actually, we're not eating M&M's yet. I'm still stuck in the morning. Hello, sunshine. You guys have joined us. Joined us here on the Fourfold Formula Mini Series Episode 2. Today, we have hosts in the back green room here. We have Teresa Velarde, who is an author and a publisher and a media host and an amazing friend and businesswoman, and I just love her to death. Then we have Faith. I don't even know how to describe Faith other than my left arm, my right arm, and my rock. She actually does have a job and is a mother, but you're going to love her. Then we have Marcus in the house, who is my co-author and... Simply put, he's Jesus. He is Jesus. So let's bring in Marcus. We're going to talk about our book that we just had released called The Fourfold. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise Jesus. He's in the house. Oh, my gosh. Okay, The Fourfold Formula. So we're doing these mini series about this, this 1.4 pound that I keep saying little encyclopedia that just came out. Marcus, we're going to be having on the authors. Yeah, buddy. But we're going to go a little bit deeper in these mini series with their stories and what they went through and how to motivate others. And, you know, we know some of them are writers and not writers. And and we have another book coming out that they can go on our website, allthingswellness.com forward slash author. Yeah. Join us. Yeah. Right. And it's amazing how people are just starting to recognize that we got something going and, um, you know, the group is getting bigger and bigger. It's amazing to see how, uh, how, uh, actually the concept does resonate with people and, uh, they're signing up, you know, it's great. Yeah. The book has 40, um, wow. authors, including us and James Redfield wrote the forward. So we have 30 others, media partners wrote stories so we've got a big community we're going to bring my girls in here so teresa velarde hi hey good let's to see you good to see you let's pop in faith from the uk oh is she come oh she's she's coming in from like you know it takes a while to pop over the ocean <laughs> <laughs> and she hit Cross the pond, baby. Cross the pond. Mm -hmm. Cross the pond. She's she's still on the ship when she puts her feet on the ground. We shall know. Hey, Teresa, welcome. Yeah. Um, you have many hats, and we just want to thank you for taking some time out of the day. And our publisher, you know. Yeah, this is this is a labor of love. This is a labor of love right here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just so grateful to be able to um, say that I had a piece in this book. We just the, I had a chance to write something and I had a chance to be your publisher on this. I think that the stories in this book are changing lives as we speak. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's stories of um, conquering a problem, living in a solution and really bringing your heart to the table. It's not... You know, sometimes when people say stuff like that, it's just dry material, the how to, the whatever. But these are real life stories where these authors, all of us, have put our heart on the line here. And I just want to thank you and Marcus for um, putting it all together. You've done a great job. Awesome. And you wrote a really cool story. We'll talk about gratitude and give us some guidance and maybe why you really focus on it now. Faith, welcome. Welcome to America. Hi. How are you today? How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I've got a day off, so I'm, I'm enjoying some more sort of quiet time today. Mm -hmm. so, That's good. Have you got your? Have you been reading some of the stories? Because you got your book like faster than anybody. What are your thoughts have, on the book? I have actually. Um, and what I've loved it is each story is so unique. It, each person has put their own sort heart and soul into the story and reading them it was almost like walking through their journey with them um, and it was like it was, it was quite sort of an incredible experience just to feel those emotions and what they went through and then the outcome at the end um, and it really sort of touched me touched my heart and I think there's so much that we don't realize that other people have gone through the same things that we have um, and it just I didn't feel quite as alone when I read it so yeah, you and Marcus reminded me a lot of each other. You know, I know you really well over the last year, and um, you've been an intricate part of this process and part of my support system, and Faith is actually in 
my acknowledgement part of the book. Um, and I, I've watched you grow. I've watched so many of the authors grow through this process. But I think of you and Marcus are very similar in your personalities and and kind of your the statement that both of you say when I see you on interviews and things that are very similar are now finding out that you're more alike with other people and and that it's okay and not to keep it in your tummy and beat yourself up. And Marcus, what were your thoughts? Do you remember when Faith's story came in, which is about, um, you know, Faith, tell us your story. It's so <laughs> unique. My, my story. <laughs> yeah, tell us the title of your story and a little synopsis. And I want to ask Marcus what his thought was when we started editing it. Mm -hmm. um, my, my story is about how um, grief led me to choose more of a father figure and to marry somebody who was quite a bit, a bit older than me. Um, and I went through something obviously quite traumatic. I lost my father um, when I was quite young and it left sort of quite a big void. And it was sort of the process of what happened after that and sort of the reasons why we possibly choose relationships like that and what it gives us. Um, and also how it can, you can end up in a, a situation that isn't always actually positive. It can be quite negative, but it's, it's giving you something at the time that you don't always realize. Right, right. How long did it take you before you realized that you were unintentionally or unconsciously trying to fill that void were you in that relationship before or was it after you kind of look back um i think it was probably about i was married for three and a half well separate after three and a half years so i think it was probably when we've been together for about four and a half years mm -hmm. so it was I, was, I was quite young i was, I was only 19 when i met him so it was, i think so you think you, you know so much when you're young um, but you're still growing, you're still, I mean, you're, you're learning all throughout your life, but mm -hmm. I think when you're young, you are quite, I was quite naive um, and still learning. Marcus, you wrote some stories about relationships. What were your, what were your thoughts about faith stories of relationships? You both sat in the heart chapter of the book. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, for me, it basically uh, was to recognize if you find the right person for the wrong reason, uh, there are going to be issues that crop up and wind up making you realize that you made a mistake, I suppose, you know, and then you have to unravel that. And that's not very easy to do. Um, you know, I think that Faith points out that, you know, you have to just kind of like move forward instead of trying to get stuck in a relationship that doesn't work for you. And you're going to wind up having to deal with all the deficiencies that are going to cause stress and um, are not going to wind up giving you the life you deserve. So you know, it is a path to resolution of a situation. And although clearly it was very hard, <laughs> um, it wound up giving her the opportunity to start something new and to get away from that costly mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. Yep. Teresa, what are, what are your thoughts? You held all these stories just like, I mean, all of us in this room <clears throat> read these stories over and over and over. And I say that because Faith is one of our editors. Um, what were your thoughts as the publisher when you got our edited, our version of the manuscript and they started? Because you've been in a lot of compilation books and yeah. done a lot. Of, what are your thoughts with any of the stuff you got? So these, um, all of the stories are so heartfelt. And so, um, you know, for people to show up as, um, as they truly are in a way that they might normally, like, I don't think, I don't think Faith goes around telling her story about how, how she came to be in this relationship. I don't think Marcus goes around telling the story. And I certainly don't go around telling the story of how I had to leave my relationship for the same reason, wrong relationship, wrong time, you know? So um, I don't go around telling it, but there's something very healing about number one, writing it out. And number two, allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to put it out there in a book so that other people can um, really learn from, relate to, and really use the information for their own healing. So, you know, there were some stories in here that, you know, I, 
I have a box of tissues on my desk still from, you know, reading some of these stories. And, and that's a good thing because that's kudos to the author in all of the ways I just said. Um, and it's, it's also uh, great for me to be able to allow myself to go to those places that I normally might not have yet have really been touched by uh, the stories that are part of this book. There, I have to just say that having read it several times from with an editor's eye and getting all the formatting correct and whatnot, there's not one that I can say that was not worth my time to read. They were all worth my time to read over and over again. Hmm. Yeah. You know, your, your story, because, you know, we had seven media partners for this project and the media partners also wrote stories. And so that's why there's, there are 44 stories in the book and there's content to talk about the all things wellness wheel. Uh, that Marcus and I teach. And when we think about the 44 stories, yours and the media partner stories, yours was specifically about gratefulness and gratitude. And, um, you know, I would like to dive into, because I work with that with my clients, and I just really try to get them to when they do their grateful list or start in the beginning of the day to try to set their day to go above and beyond and more detailed about what they're writing down. I was joking with you when we were in the green room, you know, let's talk about more than just, I'm so grateful for the sun yeah. and the roof over my head. So yeah. talk to us about what made you start focusing on gratitude and how others can look at it differently. What made me start focusing on gratitude was my bad relationship that I had no idea how to get out of. I went into a 12-step program and I was like, I didn't want to have anything to do with God because I felt like he was punishing me for not listening at the altar when he said, don't marry this man. Not once, but twice, but thick-headed that I am, I did it anyway, right? So then I thought I was like, being punished. And I was trying to, I was trying on my own, however I knew how, with whatever few resources that I had, um, to like work my way into a place where this relationship was going to work, even if I had to white knuckle it through the entire thing. Because you know, I grew up in a religion where you 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 don't get divorced or you get excommunicated. So, and it really, I needed out and didn't know how to get there. So when I when I went to the twelve step room, I was asked, "What are you grateful for?" And it made me stop and think, and I couldn't come up with anything. And I I learned how to use this muscle to really look at my life and see that despite the fact that everything looks like crap, there is plenty that is going on in my world to be grateful for. And I know the box situation that you're talking about. People get up, I'm thankful for the sunshine. I'm thankful for the warm bed. I'm thankful for the cup of coffee in the morning. And that's all well and good. But, you know, go go outside of the box. So one of the things that I did when I started to do, when I started looking for things that I was grateful for is play a game with the alphabet. So like everything, like find a person, a thing, um, uh, something that you are grateful for, three things that you're grateful for with the letter A. Mm -hmm. And it takes you out of the box, okay? It takes you out of the box. It makes you think, oh, I'm grateful for my friend Annie, who I talked to talked about this morning. I'm grateful for um, my attitude that is all about gratitude right now. And then I can bring that to other people through this story and through the community that I've set up that I'll talk about in a second. And then I'm also grateful for the apples that are on the trees in my backyard. Right. You know, so all of these things, you get out of the box and it, and and you get out of bed in the morning, you get out of the box, you write them down. There's something healing about writing them down. Don't just say them, write them down. Mm -hmm. So all of that is, um, and you can share them in the Grateful Hearts community. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and how people can find you. I'm just going to make sure we're live here. If you see me looking down, that is what I'm doing. Let's pop Teresa up. Talk to us, not me, but let's go with Teresa. <laughs> Thank you. That, that would be really good to pop you so on Facebook. I have the Grateful Hearts community and you can just go in there and write what you're grateful for every day. Tell you that we're beefing it up a little bit. I'm changing a couple of things where um, it, it kind of stayed stagnant for a while just because time factor, but we got that all worked out now. I'm grateful for the people that are helping me out. 
and we are going to start having some real fun in the Grateful Hearts community on Facebook. Um, we're building out a website, but the one thing that I want to talk about is this is a place where you can share what you're grateful for on a regular basis. And there's going to be a prompt in there daily for you to be able to um, put things that you're grateful for, write them in the community. Other people will, it's, it's a way to start conversation and have people in the mindset of gratitude. So um, it is an attitude. And if you, if you have that attitude of gratitude, you will live an abundant life. And abundant is just not about money, guys. It's all about relationships. It's about physical abundance, financial abundance. Um, just so many things can fall under that category. So, yeah. And there's also, we're putting a book together. A lot of the authors, Faith is going to contribute, Peggy and Dr. Marcus. We're putting get a book together called A Daily Gift of Gratitude. So, um, actually, if you want to know more about that, here's what you can do. I have a number that you can text the word grateful to grateful and you what is going on? I just I keep just putting people in and out. <laughs> my 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 bracelets just smacking things. So Teresa, go ahead and tell us and then we'll make sure we put it in the comment section after the show. Okay, so if you want to know how you can be part of the gratitude book, the daily gift of gratitude, text the word grateful to 570-230-4185 and we'll get the information to you. But in the meanwhile, just go to the Grateful Hearts community on Facebook and let's share gratitude. Yeah, start the conversation. Yeah, get that energy flowing. If you're positive and you hang around with positive people, that stuff just multiplies. Exactly. Hey, Faith. Share with that uh, you're following, which is increasing and increasing because now you're blogging and writing and you're getting ready to come into the second book. And can you share with people like some of the red flags that what you've maybe learned in that relationship? What, what do you look for now when somebody's right or not right for you, whether it's romantically or as a friend or coworker? Um. I mean, I've always listened to my intuition, so it's it's more how I feel around them and their energy, um, whether somebody's supportive of me. Um, but it's also how it's, just, it's generally more feeling. Um, if somebody sort of tries to take take over, or um, wants to try and basically sort of make choices for me and doesn't empower me, is more disempowering than that would be sort of more of a sort of a red flag. Um, so I think I've spent so many years re rebuilding my own confidence. So somebody who wants to try and knock my confidence down, um, it says more about them than it says about me. So that's a quite a big red flag for me. If somebody wanted to reach out to you or um, get some advice, or where can they find you? Um, they can email me at uh, fancyfaith1234 at iCloud.com. Perfect. And, and you're on Facebook. on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram and I'm on LinkedIn as well. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing we're seeing with this. Marcus and I are watching people connect, these authors connect with others for like even collaborations for jobs or projects. Um, you know, Marcus has been contacted directly to do some things that even potentially, you know, you might not have reached out and started the conversation that. So you guys may very well be contacted to start support groups or to speak at certain events. You never know. What are your thoughts, Marcus, over there this morning in sunny Grand Junction, Colorado? Well, it ain't sunny. We have some serious uh, weather here, which is kind of nice because everybody is waiting for the downstream water, right? <laughs> <laughs> the west is parts so we uh we had uh we had a pretty good um downpour. but uh with regards to what was the question <laughs> my question is we were just watching how like the collaborations with the group and how people are kind of connecting with each other on different things different projects and you've been contacted to do some yep. research projects and some other things that maybe you wouldn't even have reached out to do that this is elevating your right. exposure to Right, right, right. I mean, it's the networking that is so amazing, you know, and um, the, the, the interesting part is that 
you always have a choice to say yes or no when somebody approaches you about something, right? And you have to obviously, mm -hmm. and you know how difficult it is to say no if it doesn't mm -hmm. feel right to you. But um, the networking situation is really quite amazing. And the things that come off of it are completely unpredictable. Um, it's not that, you know, oh, yes, I'm trying to do this, and now I'm waiting for somebody to give me an idea or so. It's just something comes at you, you identify, you know, what right, is right. in that for the whole group, for the for the uh, wellness situation that we're in. And yeah. then try and contribute as much as possible because everybody has um, the opportunity through that book to... Um, learn and develop a little bit more in and of themselves. And when that is happening, everybody wins as far as I'm concerned. So our support of all of this is um, hopefully leading everybody on the right path, you know, yeah. uh, decreasing stress uh, because we all have to deal with this and improving the sense of well-being and joy for life. It's mm. uh, certainly lacking that. Yeah, Faith um, knows the wellness wheel really, really well. She was my client at one point in time and on one of my docu-series shows, season two. And, you know, Faith, you, when we spoke and even were posting and recruiting for book one, and we were saying, you know, we're going to be talking about the trademark, all things wellness wheel. And you had a, you were very familiar with it. So once you got the book and you saw how the stories laid out in the four, you know, quadrants, what were your thoughts on how it meshed together as far as the book and the framework of the book? Um, I think it, I think the All Things Wellness Wheel is fantastic because it does cover every area of of a person's life, and I think every story does fit into somewhere within that wheel, and if there is a deficiency or there's there's something within one part of your life that isn't working then that is going you are going that is going to trip you up so that it's something that you need to look at so i think it's it's great that each story does cover all, all areas of life yeah um, in different ways yeah that's i was saying on last night's show that um, janice was on last night co-hosting and I had gotten, she had contacted me yesterday and was talking about the book and some of the authors just were writing stories. They didn't think about the content and you know, a lot of compilation books just put the stories together in very nice form. And I've been a part of them before and it's, it's about stories. It's chicken soup of the soul stories. Here you go. Gorgeous platform. We really wanted to make sure that we brought some content and some of our own commentaries and tips and tricks. And um, she wasn't expecting quite the product that she got and uh, she was really happy that from James Redfield all the way through to the author's biographies and their you know points of contact and their pictures like it was just kind of a whole present a whole package together yeah, so the, the, ama ahead. the amazing part of it is that um, <clears throat> you know it's not just stories it is trying to get people to coax people into figuring out how that applies to themselves through the wellness group. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, you, if you've if got a tool that goes beyond the story, you can basically figure out how it fits into your life. And that is, I think, the, the, the unique part of our book. Um, so it's not just a compilation of stories. It's also a, a work book, so to say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Teresa, what are your thoughts? What are your... I can see I can see exactly what Marcus just said because it is like like when I was first introduced with your to your wellness wheel because I live by the phrase how you do anything is how you do everything and so wellness is not just about your body it is about your mind your heart your spirit and everything that makes them up so the wellness wheel is genius Peggy it's genius and it, and it's the same thing like with gratitude like stepping out of the box of gratitude it's not just being grateful for the things that are in your in mm -hmm. your you know, mm -hmm. in here, it's grateful for everything that's out there that makes up your world. So I think that um, great, it's just great. And I have to say this, I love your email address, Fancy Faith. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Um, 
<laughs> you know, it's like it's showing up as who you are. Like how you do anything is how you do everything. And these stories really in in this book, um, they they speak to that. You know, so and I think if you're unable to figure out how that phrase fits into your a certain part of your life, that's where the focus should be at this particular point. Like figuring that out, how you know how that what you do in one area of your life um, and how you show up in other areas of your life. There's so many stories about that in this book. So I kudos to the two of you, to all of us who are mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. I am so looking forward to the interviews with the authors and um, on conversations that make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, I'm, I'm just like overall excited. Can you tell? <laughs> it's, you know, uh, Pat Basile is in my acknowledgement as well. And she is the owner and radio ho show host herself with Transformation Talk Radio. And she was a really intricate part of getting me to where I am uh, brand wise. And I'm saying this because brand isn't just about business. It's not a just a professional hat you wear. Branding is your integrity and your belief system and where you are today and where you wanna go, where you've been. And I remember a specific meeting that I had with her and she said, your resume looks great. Your resume of life looks great, but you need to learn to be a storyteller. A, you need to tell the stories of your lifetime, of your resume of your life. And that was in 2018 and it didn't hit me until I realized that I can tell story. I have stories. Mm -hmm. As a coach, I was always like, yo, you guys got stories. Let's get these testimonies out there and change some lives. But I wasn't walking the talk and talking the walk. I wasn't realizing how important we've been told stories since we were babies. Mamas talk to their babies in their womb. We talk to our children and our grandchildren. Our teachers talk stories. It is something we do our whole entire life. The Bible is stories. You know, it doesn't matter if you're reading Paddington the Bear. So anybody listening out there today, if you think that you do not have a story, I am telling you, you have a story. The toughest part is, is thinking that nobody cares and nobody will connect to it. And I'm telling you, it will elevate you. It's the best counseling you could do. It's the best drug you could do. It is the best cure all to tell your story and to connect. And I am preaching and I need to make sure we end this show. So Marcus, what is your final thoughts or call to action for any of our listeners? No, you're absolutely correct. You know, <clears throat> I was in that exact position trying to figure out how I can put something on paper. It was a little daunting in the beginning because I just never experienced that and I never felt myself to be an author or anything like that. Um, but going through the process, I must say, has transformed me quite a bit. And, and, and so I have a personal, you know, skin in the game, so to say, to try and convince people to start that process because it is so transformative. Mm -hmm. So please, everybody who has, who's on the fence, give it a try because it is worth it. And the platform that we built here is basically one of those that um, you really, your investment is minimal in comparison to other places where you are. So, so this is really... Um, to get your feet wet. Yeah, that's a good point. It's 2,000 words, so it's not a huge daunting task to write a whole book would be like, whoa, how am I gonna tackle that? Mm -hmm. But um, uh, to tell a story and then reap the benefits from it is what I wish that a lot of people would try out. I love that, thank you. Faith, what would you say to anybody listening and watching? What would you give them as a think about or a call to action or anything you wanna say? <clears throat> um, and one of the things I'd say is there's lots of different influences in life through your parents, through your partner, your children, your co-workers, the media, but it's, it's easy to lose your own voice and forget mm -hmm. actually what makes you happy and don't ever lose that connection to yourself and that voice inside of you. Wow, that's great. That's really good. I noticed with a couple of the storytellers figuring out who they were because they bear, we bury stuff. So we go through the trauma, like me, I, I went through the trauma, got rid of it, put it in a box in the side of my heart and said, peace out, I'm moving on to other things. Right. And as I started to tell the story of the lesson as my left brain thinks, I'm like, ew, 
<laughs> what's that crap bubbling up? Like, let's not go there. And I had several people reach out with the same thing where they had to just sit in it and go, why? I don't know if I want to do this. So Teresa, you know, you're a publisher. You'd say you've heard the same thing over and over. I know. Yeah. But once you give yourself permission to, um, to look at those places that make you go, ew, you'll yeah. find that in the same place of ew is, is a yay. I got through that. And, you know, I can, I can, uh, I can now say that I've conquered that part of whatever it is that had me in the ooze space, you know? So I call it the mud. Ooze space. I call it the mud. Ooze space. There you go. There's a new word. Ooze space. I'm Ew, sorry. yucky space. I know. Okay. I love being with you guys. Let's talk about what's going on tonight. So we have another episode coming to you tonight at 7 o'clock. It's episode 3. We've got... Andy Scarantino and Rachel Sweet coming at you tonight with some amazing stories. Um, the um, Sugar Plump Fairy and um, and then everything that happens on an airport bench. So be sure to join us because that could be scary. All right, you guys, we'll catch you tonight. And if you have any questions, plop them in the comments or you can email me at Peggy at All Things Wellness. And we have a giveaway for you, Marcus and I, the first five people that email me at Peggy at all things wellness.com will get an autograph book if you give us a copy of an invoice that you have also bought the book on Amazon. So you buy one for yourself and then give a second one away. BOGO. Buy one, give one. Yes. All right. See you later, guys.